Okay guys, so as promised, um, I'm going to do a very, very simple, uh, basic introduction on how to parry with the sabre. This also applies to back sword or uh, skivona or other types of cut and thrust sword which have a hilt on them. And it's important to point out the hilt is an important part of this way of parrying. Um, right, so uh, we're going to show from an engaging guard's terse, simply for clarity, but this could go from any engaging guard. And Martin's only going to give me uh, one type of attack, and that is a number one cut. We just demonstrate the number one cut. It's a downwards diagonal cut uh, from his outside line towards my left temple. Okay? So, importantly, when you move into distance to engage with someone, if you've got your outside line closed, you move it in such a way that the opponent's blade is on your outside line. There's no point being in terse if you engage on this side. If you engage on the inside line, you can still engage in cut. Because then, in that moment when you come into distance, you're covered. Okay, so it's a much safer way to, uh, to move into someone's um, engaging range. Okay, um, right. So, we move into distance, into terse, and at this point, Martin decides to launch uh, with a lunge, a cut number one at my temple. Now, importantly, when I go to defend from this, it's very important that I move the sword, but I do not at the same time, as many people do when they're learning or when they're a bit jittery in the competition, uh, and move backwards at the same time. The reason being, if I move into distance and he attacks me, and I parry moving backwards, when I go to hit him back, i.e. repost, I can't really reach him. Okay? I might be able to reach the arm if I'm lucky, but that should be protected by his hilt. So, if you want to be able to parry and repost, it's very important that you stand your ground with the parry. And in actual fact, uh, many successful fighters I know actually move a little bit closer with the parry, um, which makes it all the more difficult for him to escape the repost. So, the first thing is, stand your ground. Right, <coughs> so, the number one. Next thing, you receive the parry in a cool, calm and collected way, keeping the hand relatively close to the body. What you must not do, if we go again, what you must not do is lash out at the incoming blow, because what that does is it leaves you incredibly exposed if that wasn't a real attack and it was a fake. Okay, it also leaves you incredibly wide spaced in order to make a repost. So, when the attack comes in, stand your ground and parry conservatively. You should be parrying more or less on the edge of your own silhouette. Okay, let's try, try this from a different angle so Martin will stand in front of me. <coughs> and give me the number one. So, to there. I've stood my ground and I have parried fairly close to my body and I can now easily repost to him in a number of ways and reach his body easily. Okay? An important thing to say as well um, is that when you parry close to the body, it means that your arm is essentially loaded and you can unload that into a lot of force into hitting the opponent. If you stretch the arm out with parries, you've got quite a weak arm uh, and in George Silver terms you're lying spent and it's very difficult for you to hit with any force, um, hit on the repost with any force. So, <coughs> the last thing to mention, so we've looked at stand your ground, parry calmly and close to your body, and the final thing is, it's very important when you parry with sabre, that you parry close to the hilt, okay? So this portion of the blade, known as the fort or the strong, is the strongest part of the lever that you're holding in terms of absorbing shock, okay? Someone can swing something really quite heavy at you, like a long staff or a hammer, uh, and you can absorb the blow very easily with this part of your weapon. If you try and parry with the foible or the weak of your weapon, it's very likely to collapse. So, stand your ground, keep your arm close to you, and parry with the lower part of the blade. If it hits the hilt, it doesn't matter because you've got a hilt there. And this comes back to my earlier point of how this style of parrying goes with uh, hilted swords. Doing this with a medieval sword can be very risky because if you misjudge the distance, you can easily get hit in the fingers, which can take your fingers off and can disarm you. Okay, so go one more time, stand your ground, uh, parry close to your body and uh, parry on the fort of your blade. And if you do all these things, you can very easily repost in the person's head or arm or body or leg or wherever else you want to repost without having to do anything much from this point. Okay, thank you.